questions. Uh, James will be talking about React and serverless. So uh, this is talk about um, full stack JavaScript and how it can be made easy with uh, various tools that we can use. Hi, James, how are you? Hey, what's going on? Very good. Perfect. So we have you there. Um, how have you been? I'm good. It's Just been a been while since out. we've seen each other. Well, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen anyone in person. <laughs> <laughs> so we we got to hang out back in Florida in February, early March, whenever that was. Right, right. I, was, you were one of the last, last yeah. person I saw. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was the last trip that I've taken since all this has happened. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything closed down just a few uh, days after that. Yeah. It's been it's been weird, especially for people that are used to traveling and hanging out in person. But it it's worked out all right. <laughs> good, good. Um, so your favorite framework is React. I am, yeah, I'm a Re React fan. And the talk that I have is has React in the title. Not too much of it is React specific. So hopefully, people that are fans of Vue and Angular and Ember and other frameworks will get something out of it too. <laughs> Uh, if anyone wants to learn about React, I believe you do have a series of courses available. I do. I'll actually have, like in the slides, I'll have a link to, it's a React and serverless course, so it actually like goes pretty well with this uh, content. <laughs> so and your video kind of just like... like slowly disappeared out of the screen. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to show the results. Yeah. Where are they? Over there. That's cool, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go, going back. <laughs> um. During this uh, pandemic time, I've I've had the time to invest and in, and in spend time with <laughs> various video production software and hardware, and I'm still kind of playing with it, so it's still yeah. brand new. I think we all are. I'm doing doing a lot of like live streaming now, and there's something new like every time that I need to fix or like add or something. It's just <laughs> it's a never ending process, but we've made a lot of progress so far. Good. Uh, let's just wait another two minutes, just in case somebody, someone from another track joins us uh, in the JavaScript track. Um, so we'll we'll just wait it uh, one minute or two before we get started. Um, yeah, we'll is there do... anything that? Oh, why don't you plug us your your Twitter account while we're waiting? Yeah, um, I'll throw it in the chat. But I am James Q Quick on everything. Um, so Twitter, Instagram, GitHub, Facebook, LinkedIn. And then my personal site is uh, jamesqquick.com as well. And all, that's actually like my first intro slide. So you'll see it all again, but <laughs> for the time being. And part of, uh, so on the Twitter, I would encourage people to go there. This will be part of, a, a small part of a demo at the very end of this. It's just to show off a little bit of like interaction in, in a static site that I think will be fun. So good. And you work at Odd Zero now. I'm at All Zero. Yep. We got my All Zero Pride shirt on. And, a great company, uh, I must say. Yeah, it is. If you haven't tried it, you you definitely should take a look at Odd Zero. Yep, and I'll I'll give a little bit of a All Zero shout out throughout the presentation as well. Good, good. All right. Well, why don't I let you get started with the actual presentation, and I'll just disappear for now and let you take it over from now. All right. Uh, cool. Thank you. Uh, let me get my screen sharing appropriately. Make sure I grab the wrong one. And if you're in the chat in here, uh, say hello. I would, it makes it feel a little less awkward to know that people are here. So if you are here, maybe uh, maybe comment on your experience in React and or serverless. And if you've never heard of, of either one, that's totally fine too. But anyway, uh, welcome and thanks for being here. Uh, this talk is React and serverless. It's full stack JavaScript made easy. There's uh, lots of different things you can do in JavaScript and things change very often. And so we're gonna touch on some of the, I think the more modern and to me, exciting parts of JavaScript. So I'll first uh, just introduce myself. If I get the cursor over here on the right place. I um, mean, I haven't figured out, I don't know where this animation is coming from. I tried to get rid of this animation of my image and I don't know where it is. I've deleted all the animations on the slide and I can't figure it out. So you get the animated uh, picture, but my name is James Q. Quick, uh, James Q. Quick on anything. I've got the links in the chat there. And I consider myself to be three things, a developer, a speaker, and a teacher. And I've done some combination of those three things for about seven years professionally. And I think it really comes down to two things. I enjoy learning and building, and I do that constantly. And then I also enjoy just working with people and teaching people. And uh, that combination of things has led me to my current role as a developer advocate at Auth0. And I've been there since uh, January and I'm loving it. 
And Auth0 is an amazing option if you are a developer and you're looking to incorporate authentication or authorization into your applications. That's really our goal is to make the process as easy as possible. So we take care of a lot of that stuff for you. And then my goal and my role specifically is to facilitate that as well. So doing talks and doing one-on-one -on -one sessions and just being in the community and being engaged with people that are out there. I uh, see so we get one response in the chat about using serverless and AWS using Node.js. Very cool. We'll talk a little bit, or we'll see some demos of serverless functions here as we go through. So in addition to Auth0, I actually have the benefit of being able to represent two other countries, not countries, companies as well. Uh, I am a Twilio champion. Twilio is an amazing, very fun platform for being able to see or send uh, programmatically text and uh, voice and send emails and other cool stuff. So I get to represent them as a champion. And then I'm part of the Media Developer Experts program, which is sponsored by Cloudinary for media management, uh, hosting, and transformations and things. And we'll see a little bit about both of those along the way. So uh, let's start by just talking about the state of JavaScript as it is now. I don't know what uh, the background is for people that are in here, but let's just kind of start from scratch and talk about where JavaScript is. And if you are a part of the JavaScript community, um, sorry that um, that link is a little bit cut off there, I apologize, but uh, you've probably heard of the state of JavaScript uh, survey that goes out uh, once a year and it asks people like out of these technologies that you use or have heard of or have never heard of, how are you using them? When are you using them? Where are you using them? That sort of thing. And I think the, the thing that just jumps out to me on this slide is that there's so many different boxes in here. And this, I think, is just representative of JavaScript as a whole. This is one of the, the good things and the bad things of JavaScript is there is a, a new framework every day, it seems like. There's a new uh, utility or new tool. There's new something all the time. And especially in the JavaScript ecosystem, it's a never-ending world to be in. And so you look around at all these uh, different options, the different choices that you have, and you kind of get overwhelmed. And I certainly feel this as well, where you don't really know where to go. And that's kind of where we are with JavaScript of, if you've been in, for, in it for a long time, either you've got a bunch to learn because it changes so quickly, or you're jumping into it for the first time and you get this like, don't really know where to go type feeling. So that's kind of a downside, but the benefit, the beautiful thing about the state of JavaScript that it's in now is that you can literally build anything with JavaScript. You can build, what you probably already expect is your front-end applications using front-end JavaScript. But you can also build server-side applications or your back-end with Node.js using JavaScript as well. You can also build desktop applications. There's a, I don't know, a framework is the right word or a tool called Electron.js, which allows you to build desktop applications, uh, which is really, really neat uh, using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, your web technologies. And if people do uh, use VS Code as your editor, maybe, that's actually an Electron application. Uh, so it's a great example of a very powerful application and performant application that you can build with Electron. And then you can also build mobile applications uh, with React Native. So you've got front end, you've got back end, desktop, mobile, you can do scripts and all kinds of wild things with JavaScript. And that's really the beauty of it is you can really do anything. But today we're here to talk about uh, React and how that fits in with uh, React and serverless in this context. So it's also good to know that in React specifically, a subsection of the JavaScript ecosystem, the React ecosystem itself is very big. So there's React and you have like create React app to get started, for example. You have React Native to build uh, native applications, Android and iOS. And then you get into this other tier of, I say newer, but they've some of them have been around for a few years, frameworks on top of React that are really here for a purpose. And we'll get into that in a second. But there's things like Gatsby. This is one that I use a lot. Most commonly, it's thought of as a static site generator. But it can do a lot more than that with this rehydration process that it has, where it can basically generate static pages, but can also do anything that you can do with a regular React application. Next up, no pun intended, is Next.js. And this is a tool that lets you blend your server-side rendered pages, your dynamically generated pages, with your static pages and give you the option to do both and really combine them in a neat way. And then you may not have heard of these two, Redwood.js and Blitz.js are two full-stack React frameworks that help tie everything together. And they have a lot of parallels and similarities to Ruby on Rails as a framework with some of the scaffolding that they have built in, but just the idea of having that full-stack application right inside of using React. 
And so these last four, these options have come into play and they have started to exist. They've come into play for a reason. And the reason is this new methodology, this new idea that you may have heard of, and maybe you haven't, but it's this uh, this term called the Jamstack. And I think a lot of us may have heard it. We may have used it. We may have heard other people talk about it. But I think a lot of people still don't really quite know what the Jamstack is. And it is kind of hard to be very specific about what it is. But I do think it's important that we kind of talk a little bit about what the Jamstack is and break it down for you. So JavaScript here stands for, or excuse JavaScript stands for, Jam and the Jamstack stands for the J JavaScript, the A for APIs, and then the M for markup. So that's what the acronym is. And then there's several different benefits and focuses for Jamstack applications. Performance is first and foremost, and this is uh, gets into a lot of what we'll talk about in a second is static sites. The idea of a static sites is that you build a site, you have some sort of assets, and you host them on a CDN, content delivery network. And with that sort of workflow, there's, there's not really any server maintenance for me to do, so there's higher security. I'm not having to do patches on the server. That stuff is taken care of by someone else. There's also the idea of like, as a site gets really, really popular, since these are just files that get sent back down to the users as they request them, this can stay, scale really, really high and handle lots of transactions coming in at any given time. And the last one is actually one of the ones that's closest to heart for me is the developer experience. I, in the last couple of years, moved my personal site from WordPress to a Gatsby application that's hosted in Netlify. You'll hear a lot about Netlify in this talk. And the experience of developing that and building that and the deployment uh, model that I have tied into the Jamstack, tied into Netlify is just really, really great. So this is, this is probably these two bigger, or this one bigger boulder point at the top is probably the most important aspect of JavaScript or Jamstack for me and kind of understanding what it is and some of the implications behind it. And, and this says it's a progressive concept with proven components. And if you think about this, Jam and Jamstack being JavaScript APIs and markup, neither one of those things is really new to us. We've had JavaScript for years now. We've done different things with JavaScript for years. We've had APIs for years that we worked with. We've had markup and HTML or markdown or whatever we use. We've had those things to, to use and have used them for years and they've worked for years. The difference with the Jamstack now is that we're taking these existing technologies and we're building out this progressive concept. We're coming up with this new way of how we combine things to help solve some different issues and problems that we have. So I mentioned developer experience earlier as one of the big benefits. A big part of that is uh, doing Git workflows where I can have continuous integration, where I check code into a repository, it automatically goes through a build process and then is hosted and is live and ready to go. As a developer, I'm hands off. I don't have to do anything other than write and check in code and everything just kind of works. And that's part of the build process as well. During that uh, continuous integration, there's a build step that will take the application, the code, run a build, and then have that thing ready to serve from a CDN so things are super fast and super available. So if you want to do some extra reading, a couple of links in here, jamstack.org, jamstack.wtf is actually a really good example as well. And then that graphic that we just looked at a second ago is netlify.com slash jamstack. And so I've mentioned the word static sites a few times here, and I just want to go back to uh, really defining exactly what that is. And for me, a static site is one that uh, it may go through a build, proce build process or it may not, but the output of that build process, if there is one, is just a set of static files and those files go and live on a server or a CDN somewhere. And when a user requests your site, there's no real time generation. Those files just get sent back. So there's not really... From a developer perspective, there's not really any server. There's continuous integration built in. Remember that developer experience. And then these things, these sites are fast and secure. And ultimately, we'll see this more in a second with serverless functions. But hosting, in this case, is a breeze. Again, you have your build system and the output of your build of some sort of static files, in this case, HTML files. And those things just sit out there on a host. And so I've mentioned hosting and static site hosting and CDNs uh, several times already. And a couple of great options, if you're curious. Uh, AWS is, um, it's been around for a long time and has static hosting along with Vercel, formerly Zite, if you've heard of them. 
Firebase has static hosting. Azure has had static hosting and just uh, kind of announced an optimized version of static hosting. And then there's Netlify. And you'll hear me rave about Netlify. I use Netlify for personal sites. And you'll see a little bit of that in the demos that I show you here. It's been fantastic. It's super easy to use and does exactly what I want. And you'll see why. But regardless of all of those options, I'm, I'm kind of curious what you think when you hear the phrase static sites. What does that actually make you think of? And I'm tempted to think that you might think of a static site to be something like this, just a basic HTML file with a heading and a piece of text. Or maybe you have heading text and a little icon and some links, or maybe you get this fancy blog post layout with a cool pink color, or maybe you go all out and you get this really cool Space Jam website from the late 90s that is still out there available for you to check out today. But regardless of what you think of, with static sites, it's probably not exactly what static sites means today. And the reason is that static assets doesn't mean or don't mean a static experience. And this is really important because we talk a lot about static sites where we overlook the implications of using that word static. There's really almost nothing you can't do with static sites now. And a lot of how you combine your static sites to add functionality comes through serverless functions. And this is, this is something I've spent a lot of time with the last six months or so. I've given several talks on static sites and serverless functions and how to combine them and do cool things. And if you're familiar with the concept, the idea of serverless, you probably know that serverless doesn't actually mean there is no server. All of these files and all these serverless functions, they have to actually live somewhere. Something has to be able to host them and then serve them down uh, to a user when they request them or respond to the requests that come into a serverless function. So serverless doesn't actually mean there's no server. It just means that it's not your responsibility. It's not my responsibility as a developer, and it's not your responsibility as a developer. Because the hosts that we just talked about, Netlify and Firebase and AWS and, and Microsoft, Azure, and uh, all the other ones that are out there, Vercel, what they say is, you know, don't even worry about it. You just give me your code, and I'll take care of the rest. And again, from a developer experience perspective, this is exactly what I'm looking for and what I imagine a lot of other developers would look for as well. So what serverless means or what this looks like in here, in this example, I've got a functions directory that is embedded in my repository. Each one of those files, get user, uh, create user, get users, me, update user and upload are individual functions themselves. You can see the create user function here. And by adding that file to that directory in my repository and then checking that into source code, Netlify is gonna recognize that as a serverless function and it's gonna take care of the rest. So in theory, all I do is write a function and check it in and then magic happens. Netlify or a different type of host will step in and say, hey, I got you, I'll take care of the rest. I will have this stuff ready to go to respond to whatever requests come in. And that's pretty cool, especially from a developer's perspective. Again, servers are not my things. I, I don't wanna focus on that. I don't wanna do all the things that come along with that sort of main, maintenance and updates and patches and things like that. I wanna let someone else take care of the magic for me. So if you went down the Netlify route, you would see in your Netlify dashboard, as you check in a repository or check into your repository, with some files in your source code in a functions directory, for example. Netlify will pick those up. Talk track is an example uh, that you, we'll see in a second here. And inside of that, there's three functions that Netlify uh, picked up on and then hosted for you. In this case, it's the add feedback, the add talk, and the search tweets function. And we'll see those in a second. So all of that's really cool, but I wanna take just a minute to talk about the, the ecosystem of the Jamstack now and what it means. And really the way I look at the Jamstack now is there's all these different options to do things. It's all about putting the pieces together and figuring out how to make them work together. And I think a cool example of this is from Netlify again, is they've got a Netlify or a Jamstack examples page where you can go in and you can see websites that are built and just looking at the names in here, you see all of these technologies. You see some React in here, you see Vue, you see Gridsome and Nux, which are built on top of Vue. You'll see Gatsby and Next, which are built on top of React. You'll see Angular, you'll see all these other tools, hosting platforms, all these different things. It's kind of cool to see that these applications are built by just putting them all together. So I like to share for me a couple of options if you need to store data. I think this is just kind of an awareness of the landscape. Firebase is one that does a lot of stuff, uh, authentication, 
and data storage and hosting. Airtable is one that I've used recently. It's basically an Excel sheet database that you can customize and, and work with. It has a great API. It's really cool. Postgres is a common one. FaunaDB is one that's made a big splash in the Jamstack space that I've used recently. MongoDB has been around for a while. And then one that might surprise you that you'll see here in a second is using Trello as a database. And Trello is typically a card management tool, but you can actually use that as a data source for your applications. We'll see that in a minute as well. And then we've gotten into this idea of headless CMS options of separating our data from our front end. And so lots of these have popped up, Cosmic and Prismic and Dato and Strapi. And I personally use Sanity for my site and really enjoy that one as well because it's fully customizable and really fun and easy to work with. So the final thought of the Jamstack ecosystem for me is that there's really a service for everything. Anything that you want to do, any feature or functionality that you want to add, most likely there's something out there to help you do that. So you look at the landscape of, if I want to add payments, there's Stripe. If I want to add forms, I just came across this one the other day of Quez Forms, which is releasing a V2 coming out this week. And I think that's really cool because they do all of your backend management for forms, as well as give you some front end and back end validation. And then there's all these other ones. I mentioned Twilio at the beginning. If you want to programmatically send text or voice or emails, we'll see this in a second. If you want to host images and do transformations with Cloudinary, if you want to add e-commerce, uh, you use Shopify. And then I do work for Auth0 and I use Auth0 in all of the applications that I build for adding authentication and authorization to my applications. Haven't checked that out. You, show, you totally should. So... All of this sounds really good. It sounds really cool to me, but I think what we should do is just actually take a look at a couple of examples of these projects. Now I'm gonna grab the GitHub links and throw these in here for people that are curious. So I'll throw in the first example is TalkTrack. And you can go out and check out the source code if you want to. The second one is Dev Setups. So I wanna start with uh, TalkTrack up here. And I had this idea of I wanted to build an application where I could add all of the talks that I give as well as uh, have some way to get feedback from users on that talk that I gave. So I would actually encourage and would appreciate if someone would head on over to this link, talktrack.netlify.app. Uh, this is part of the demo, so hopefully someone contributes. If not, I guess that's okay. Uh, but I've got uh, my most recent uh, two talks are actually today. I've got the security one is later, but this one is React and Serverless. And if I click on this, I can see the date, I can see the conference, and I can see a link to the slides. So if you want to go and grab the slides, you can do that there. And then I've got this rating form, and this rating form uh, will allow you to submit feedback on the talk, and then I will be able to see it. And if people contribute in uh, some capacity, uh, we'll actually be able to see that that feedback form will trigger, this is dangerous for a live conference talk, it should send me a text message to my phone and hopefully we'll hear that ding. And that text message will show me the feedback that you sent and that's tying into Twilio. Now this app is built with Gatsby as a static site. It's authenticated. Did you hear the ding? Can people hear that? If you can, let me know in the chat. I heard it, it's real. And maybe you can see like the picture of my wife and my dogs on here. But there is the text that just came in. But this app is authenticated with Auth0. It uses uh, Gatsby as a static site generator. It's hosted in Netlify. And this is kind of the funny part or maybe interesting part for me. Where is the right tab that I'm looking for? This one here. The data for this is stored inside of Trello. And I won't, uh, actually I see the, the feedback there so I don't have to scroll down. Um, actually some more are coming in, so thank you. And the, you, I'll turn the dings off, assuming that people heard it so far. But my data is stored inside of Trello as a card. And then these are coming in, these comments are coming in real time through serverless functions and being stored inside of Trello. I think that's super, super cool. I get really excited about that. And if you want to check out the source code, you can. And you'll see inside of TalkTrack, there's a functions directory. And that functions directory will show you the different functions that I have to be able to um, handle these uh, things that come in. So one of them, actually test, this should be deleted uh, so I can get rid of that. But there's also the add feedback. So when you send that feedback to me, when you fill out that feedback form, it's going to call out to this serverless function. And this serverless function will grab that body information, the feedback and your email if you sent it, the rating and which talk or the card ID that it's associated with. 
And then I will add that comment to the card. So that's where these things come down here. I apologize if I showed your email. Sorry about that. And then if the text alerts, this is an environment variable inside of Netlify. If this is turned on, it will go ahead and use the Twilio client to go ahead and send that thing back to me. I think that's really, really cool stuff. And then if you scroll down, this thing just returns back out and that's basically all it's gonna do. There's another cool aspect of this for the add talk functionality. If we start up here, this add talk function is wrapped with require permission and it's requiring an add talk permission. And you can see this comes from an auth utils that I've got inside of this project. So when you when I log into this application, I can uh, I can log in and then I get an access token and that access token inside of it includes my role or my permissions that then can be checked inside of here to make sure that only a user with that permission can add a talk. Now, originally, when I very first showed off this demo, I didn't have any authentication in place and I had someone spam it during the presentation, which is actually perfect for a developer event because that's exactly what we're supposed to do is hack each other's stuff. But now I've got this thing set up with authentication in a static site. That's kind of a weird mix. But I'm able to handle authentication on the front end and then pass an access token to the back end and then do a validation to make sure that only users with this permission are going to be able to come in here and kick off adding this card. Now, there is one kind of mystery piece in here of where I make a post request after I create the card, I make a post request to this Netlify build hook. And the reason is with static sites, the way or static site generators, the way they work is they go and grab their data at build time and then statically, or they dynamically build static pages, if that's right. But they will at build time, go ahead and generate, pre-generate the static pages for the different, uh, in this case, the different talks that I give. So all of these talk pages in here are actually static pages that are built at build time. Now, when I add a new talk, this is why I then need to kick off a new build in Netlify to make sure that I get the latest information that you can see out there. And if you look inside of Netlify, um, you'll see inside of my deploys that I ran a couple of deploys earlier today when I added, added those new talk talks and they kicked off automatically. As a developer, I don't have to do anything. It does it all for me and it's ready to go. And the last part of this, as you can see, I've still got this test function in here, but inside of my Netlify dashboard, there are the different functions uh, that you can see are there. And Netlify just picked those up because I've got them in that directory. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is, I don't know if anybody, actually, I forgot to do this. So this probably uh, probably not going to work. If, maybe I'll come back to this at the very end. If someone would be so kind as to uh, tweet something with the hashtag jquicktalks. Actually, I think it's jqquicktalks. Sorry about that, jqquicktalks. If you would tweet something with that hashtag, I'll show you an example of getting data uh, almost real time or at least dynamically to show relevant tweets in here. So that's project number one, that's demo number one. I also have this project called DevDesk and Chrome has been freezing on me a lot recently where I had this idea of lots of times people have tweeted about their desk setups in Twitter and you have this big long thread of everybody sharing their desk setups but there's no way for me to have like one aggregated view of like, here's all of these people's setups. So I wanted to create a site where people could log in. And I guess I'll go ahead and do that here. Log in with their Twitter account. And I've got this set up with Auth0. Log in with their Twitter account there. Do the authorize to get the read access. It will grab the information from Twitter, including their description. Uh, actually, I guess I'll have to show you my public profile for that. So I'll show you my public profile. And it grabbed this, uh, this description from uh, Twitter. And then it also has a link to, in this case, my users page, as well as an image that I uploaded. And so as I'm logged in, I can now view, here's all the information that, or here's all of the different uh, desk setups that people have posted. I think it'd be really cool. And I would actually love, this is in kind of an alpha stage, but if you wanted to uh, log in with Twitter and upload an image of your desk setup, I think that would be really cool. And I would appreciate that. But this whole thing is built with the idea of React and serverless as well. So if we look inside of dev setups, we've got that same functions directory. We've got all these functions, create user, get user, get users, me, update user, and upload. And all these functions get picked up by Netlify, hosted as serverless functions. And then this application is full stack and ready to go. Now I wanna show a little bit behind the scenes of how this works. This is using Airtable as a database. Again, Airtable is mind-blowingly cool. Or if I go into dev setups, Here's all the information for these. And these are, all this stuff is public information. These are just public usernames, so I don't have to worry about sharing this. But I've got a username, I've got an image ID, 
And then if the user customizes their user link or uses link to a page that shows all the things that they use on their desk setup, as well as the description that comes from Twitter. And then lastly, these images are stored inside of Cloudinary. And because of that, I can do fancy transformations and things. And I just kind of want to raise awareness to like, I've got Airtable, I've got serverless functions, I've got Cloudinary, I've got all these different things. And the idea of Jamstack is being able to put all of these things together in a really performant way where I don't have to worry about the server. I get real good speed. I get great developer experience and I can do all of this with React or really any other JavaScript framework or just JavaScript in general and serverless functions. So inside of Cloudinary, here's all the different images that I've got stored here. I keep a reference to these inside of my Airtable table and the output of this. And Joe Lord just signed up real time. That was perfect timing because it showed up right when I was looking here. Uh, but Joe Lord looks like he just logged in and signed up. And so maybe I'll get him to, or hopefully he will upload a picture of his setup in here as well. But I just, I have a lot of fun being able to do this stuff because I love trying out new technologies. I love seeing how they fit together. And to me, that's really what the Jamstack is all about, is taking all of these amazing services that are out there, not having to write all the functionality yourself, but leveraging those things that other people have done, putting them together to make really cool and exciting applications. And I'm wondering, I'm going to do one refresh. I don't know if anyone has tweeted or not, but if they did, ah, we got a couple. Thank you so much. Uh, we got a couple of tweets in here. And just to show you that this is a static site that's making it a real time or uh, not not real time, but dynamic uh, call from a static site to a serverless function to get a, li a list of these tweets, I think is really powerful. And this is where the idea of static sites does not equal static experiences. This is a Gatsby app that most people think of as being a static site generator, but it can do so much more and it can do anything that you can do with regular React. And that I think is really, really cool. So let me slide, which I always forget which way I'm supposed to slide. Let me slide over to, or maybe I need to get out of this. And there we go. So uh, there's our demos. Again, I think those are fun and those are cool, but we're getting close to time. So let's start to get out of here. Let's start to wrap up. And the one thing I want to show you is I've got a React and serverless course that Joel mentioned earlier. You can find information about other courses and this one especially on my site at jameshuquick.com slash courses. And in this one in particular, we get into building that full stack application using Auth0 for authentication, doing access tokens and doing authorization and things inside of Auth0 and on the server or on the serverless functions, hosting, deploying to Netlify, all that cool stuff is inside of this one application. So um, I think that would be uh, pretty interesting if you wanted to check that out. I also just realized as I tab through here, that I have a typo and I'm gonna try to fix that for you by um, coming and grabbing the link in here. So I updated my URLs on my site and it no longer is a speaking page, it's actually the talks page. So I'll give you this one. And it's actually correct on this last page. So uh, jamesuquick.com slash talks. You can go and grab the slides. If you have questions after this, find me on Twitter, um, or anywhere, really, you can contact me through my website. Let me know. I'll be happy to have a conversation and answer them for you. And I think Joel is here. We've got a few minutes. I think I'm on time to have a few minutes for questions. You're right on time. So we still have a few minutes for questions. If anybody has any questions for James, um, James, you did uh, share your slides uh, in there. Um, thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed the uh, live demos. Um, yeah. Thank you. So I, I try to keep up. I, I just posted my um, my dev setup as well on your website, so you should have nice. it now. Yes. And <laughs> if you find any bugs or anything that could be improved, I think the about page doesn't actually have anything on it. So if you have any suggestions or feedback, people, if you try it out, I would love to hear it. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much. If there are any questions, once again, you can use that. You can post them here or in the uh, Dev Nation Slack channel. Uh, I believe James, you will have to leave early because you do have a um, another talk today at another conference. Uh, I've, yeah, I've got several different things today, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've got. Um, if I'll just talk for a few minutes until if there's a question, cut me off. But um, I'm doing some just kind of open Q and A coffee chat conversations with, um, I went to Vanderbilt university, so I kind of volunteered some time to talk to some of the students there. So I'm doing a few of those starting in 10 minutes and then I uh, have a talk <laughs> with them tonight. And right before that, I have a conference talk for react global summit. So today is a busy day. I'm just trying to make it through, but it's been, it's been good so far. All right. Thank you so much. I'll leave you uh, to go back to your other talks then. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, very informative talk. We really enjoyed it. 
Uh, thank you for being a guest at our first Dev Nation Day.